to paraphrase the great Mark Twain, the reports of the iPhone X's death were greatly exaggerated, so it would seem. Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest, it hurts. This is your first time here. Thanks for stopping by. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. We got a lovely community here. Welcome to all. I've taken a week or so to kind of let the news marinate after Apple's earnings reports from the beginning of this month posed a shocking contrast to the doomsday reports <laughs> that Apple was a sinking ship and the iPhone 10 were the cement shoes and all that. Maybe I'm mixing metaphors or something, but you know what I mean. I'm going to say this straight out. However, I do not trust numbers. I can't do math very well. Statistics can be made to say just about anything a crafty person wants them to say. But if but if Apple's to be believed, even though their sales fell just a little short of projections, 52 million point two phones sold instead of forecasted 53 million, Apple's sales hit $61 billion for the quarter, an increase of 16% over the same period last year, goosed by the higher price of the iPhone 10. The company's profit shot up 25% for the quarter, hitting $13.8 billion. Tim Cook went on to claim that the iPhone 10 was their best-selling model of iPhone. And although they conveniently don't release the breakdown of sales numbers from model to model, if the earnings did in fact soar, it's a decent supposition that selling the most expensive iPhone to date, more than any other model, <laughs> could account for that bump. So if we are to believe these reports, the iPhone 10 is not dead and neither is Apple. Although let's be clear, they're going to retire the iPhone 10 model for something very similar in the next lineup of phones. So in a way, maybe it's dead. I'm not going to split hairs. Okay. What I'm curious about is why the narratives coming from analysts in the lead up to the sales call were so dire. And I don't mean one or two analysts were running around like Chicken Little saying the sky is falling. Many, many reports were coming out about overstock at Apple suppliers and using that as an indicator that the phone and by extension, the company were about to nosedive hard. There were a lot of stories. So many, in fact, it became hard to doubt them just due to their ubiquity. But those reports, while possibly factually true were not indicators of the reality that was to come in early May when Tim Cook got on the phone. A few headlines from those dark days in April before the light shined again on Apple. Analysts worry Apple iPhone sales are even worse than they thought. That's from April 19th from CNBC. Apple sinks on fears of slowing iPhone sales iPhone 10 sales in rapid decline will sell fewer than 14 million yeah, 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 yeah. ZDNet 425. Analysts say market is panicking ahead of Apple's earning reports on Tuesday. There were a lot of reports like this. A lot. Apple stock dropped. People were running around on Wall Street with their hair on fire. And then suddenly the news was great. Apple made that sales call. Everybody's happy. And what do you think happens? Boop, 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 boop. This seems weird to me. Does it seem weird to you? A couple of weeks ago, uh, Rene Ritchie over at Vector released a video where he broke down a cycle on Wall Street where Wall Street and the media kind of work together to get these rumors going and build up some dire predictions for companies like Apple, resulting in the stock price going down, only to rise again after the rumors are proven untrue. If you don't believe me, Here's a graphic of Apple's stock broken down over the last month. I think it tells the tale, perhaps a shocking tale. Is it possible that Wall Street and the media are complicit in some nefarious activities here? Something that I can only call maybe price fixing or shorting the market or whatever. I mean, supposedly this stuff happens all the time with companies positioned like Apple. Apple can't defend themselves as the rumors are spread because that would add fuel to the fire if they were like, no, 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 no. Lo and behold, then the numbers are released and the reports of massive growth are there. 
So the stock price just pew, shoots up precipitously. And those who sold stock when it, when it dipped down based on these reports, lose. And those who are kind of aware of the fix here, they buy just before the news comes out and boom, profit. They make a ton of money on the backs of what are most likely just regular people trying to, you know, invest in their future. Now, I'm not a stockbroker, but this sucks. And I hope shedding some light on it will help someone, some people, recognize what's going on before Apple's next quarterly report. But that's all kind of inside baseball and not relevant to the majority of us who don't own Apple stock. What is relevant is that contrary to the reports of Apple and the iPhone X's demise, it seems all is well in the giant space donut. But let me be clear, it bothers me that Apple made 25% more money this quarter because they were selling a much more expensive phone. The cost of materials for the phone, not counting advertising and all that other stuff, is somewhere over $300, and yet the phone is 1000 now the screens for the iPhone 10 cost like $140 each and the cost of production is likely to go down, but the likeliness that Apple lowers the consumer cost is just about this. Would you lower costs if customers have proven that they're willing to pay over a thousand bucks for your phone after you've had your best quarter ever? Hell no. And frankly, this sucks. Consumers had a chance to vote with their wallets and not buy such a ludicrously priced phone, but it appears they didn't. Look, while my situation is not typical, I have purchased three iPhone 10s. According to the sales reporting from Apple, the iPhone 10 was the best selling of all the iPhone models. And yes, I use and I like the iPhone 10. Okay, it's a great phone. This is not about the phone. This has nothing to do with the phone itself. What pisses me off is I can't help but feel like we've all been manipulated again into a turkey shoot between Apple and Wall Street and the media. And let me ask you, who wins in a turkey shoot? Not the turkey. And just so we're clear, we're the turkey. Thanks so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if this was your first time here and you want to come back and all that kind of stuff, then you know the things that you're supposed to do. If you've been here before and you keep coming back, thank you. But you know what? My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL, and this is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest, it hurts. Don't make me hurt you. Until the next time, I'm out.